What's up, guys? Dante134 here. Back with a full breakdown on my um, shadow defense. Uh, just a little little tips on how I play the 46 defense. Um, again, the reason why I call it a shadow defense is because what you see is really not what's going on. And I, I, I'll explain further, but um, I'm going to be breaking down two things. Uh, how, I, how I create four-man pressures and um, basically the coverage behind it. Now, um, before we get into anything, there are two goals that we want to accomplish with this defense. We want to, um, first of all, we want to confuse our opponent enough to make a quick throw or um, hold on or well make a quick throw where that he can throw it into coverage and it'll be intercepted and they um, we want him to eventually get baited into throwing it at our user so again one of the requirements for this defense is to have uh, good user skills so in order to practice those I suggest you guys you know get into the lab play against a friend you know and just just work on the linebackers and then you when you get better or you feel co more comfortable you can you can start using with the safety but uh now we're going to jump into it uh before um we go into the actual the actual um play calling we're going to go to our depth chart and the reason why is we're going to be looking at the uh, defensive line. And uh, the stats we're going to be looking for are power moves and um, finesse moves. Now, the guys with the high finesse moves, you want to put them on the outside. Hey, we're looking at the Cowboys. Um, you want to put them on the outside. And uh, the guys with the high power moves, you want to put them on the inside. Now, uh, for the Cowboys specifically, the defensive line setup that we're going to have, we're going to put Anthony Spencer and uh, Jason Hatcher as the ends. And then we're going to have um, DeMarcus Ware and uh, Tyrone Crawford as the uh, inside guys. And now we're going we're gonna to jump right into it. We're going to go to the 46. We're going to go to... The speed package, as you can see in, in the normal package, you have three linebackers, four defensive end, four defensive linemen, and the uh, four defensive backs. If we go to speed package, you have four defensive linemen, one linebacker, and six defensive backs. Now we're gonna go into cover three, and the reason why. We're going to cover three just because it's easier to adjust and make adjustments. And um, just uh, uh, make our uh, defensive reads and uh, adjust to uh, whatever our opponent is doing. So here's, here's how it goes for the D lineman. What you want to do is you want to crash the D line up, um, re-blitz both ends. And reblitz this defensive tackle. Uh, what you want to do is you want to leave this defensive tackle on his uh, blitzing angle, and um, you'll see why after we snap the ball. As you can see, you wait a little bit and you get you get the pressure in. The pressure gets there. That's that's basically what we're, what we're hoping to accomplish. So, of course. But you get the general idea as you can as as we go from the snap. We count one, two, three, bam. Alex Smith is sacked. But what I was really looking for is this this defensive tackle. Was supposed to loop in a way that would force either Alex Smith or the guy who's controlling Alex Smith or whoever is playing with the guy you're facing to kind of step up into the pocket and that creates block sheds for the, the Marcus Ware and Jason Hatcher to get in and get the sack. So what, what happens here is he loops around and uh, basically unless the quarterback moves, 
he's gonna get he, unless the quarterback moves he's gonna get sacked and if he moves he's gonna create opportunities for the ends and the other defensive tackle to um get a sack so we're gonna we're gonna try it again we're gonna crash the d line up re blitz both ends hatcher and spencer and re blitz this defensive tackle now, in terms of put, putting guys in certain positions, for instance, Demarcus Ware, the reason why I put him next to Hatcher just because you want to have the more popular guys next to each other. For instance, um, my special fourth quarter, uh, four down, um, four down lineman package for the Giants, I would have uh, Pierre Paul and Kiwanuka as the ends, and then I would have uh, Tuck who who would be lined up next to uh, Pierre Paul and Linval Joseph, uh, who would be next to uh, Kiwanuka. And I do it the same way. And Tuck and Pierre Paul, they just create havoc. And along with Kiwanuka, they, it's pretty stout. So we're going to try it again. Let's hope the Cowboys can um, actually do something right on defense. If you snap the ball, and bam. Marcus Ray gets in for the sack. Another thing I want to I want to bring to your attention is Anthony Spencer. As we, as we do the setup, look where Anthony Spencer is lined up. He's lined up in front of the tight end. Again, this is just for this formation. It depends on the formation of of your opponent. This is not always going to happen, but look where he's lined up. He's getting a free release. He's getting ahead of steam, and that's gonna force, that's gonna allow him to uh, get into his finesse move quicker, and it, it gives us an advantage because it takes less time for uh, him to um, pretty much set up a move and then get to the quarterback. He can just go right at the tackle and come in for the sack. Now, now that we did the uh, D line, we're gonna do the coverage behind it. And um, pretty much, if you do your job in terms of staying disciplined and um, use your ring where you're supposed to be use your, your opponent's gonna for hold on to the ball unless he's unless you know he already have his read down pat and he's throwing the ball quick. Now, if he's throwing the ball quick, that's what we want again because we're gonna put up set certain zones, and uh, if he throws it, if he throws it. Into those don't into those zones, he's gonna be picked again. He's not gonna see what zones we put up, so he's not gonna know. Now, um, the coverage behind this uh, the D line. Um, what I like to do is I like to put this corner in a purple. Now, nine times out of ten, he's gonna be lined up either over here or somewhere away from the middle linebacker. What I like to do is I like to move him t closer in, just because it gives the look. Of an eight-man front, in in terms of so so that just we're protected against the shotgun runs, the popular shotgun runs, the inside zone stuff like that. We're still protected against it because we still have an eight-man box. But your opponent won't know who's going into the coverage, who's blitzing, who's um in a quarterback spy contain. Your opponent won't know any of that until he snaps the ball, and that could change any given time any given moment, any given down. So, right here, I'm going to show you how effective di putting the corner next to the middle linebacker and, and put him in, in a purple. I'm going to show you how effective that is because we're going to put up a, a curl route on the right side of the field to Dwayne Bow, uh, who is the circle receiver. And I want you to see how fast the corner gets to that Pretty, gets it gets to that side and as you can see he pretty much shoots to the outside and makes the play and that's and that's what we're looking for now before these your opponent snatch the ball right now he sees one-on-one -on -one coverage between Dwayne Bow and uh, Brandon Carr now when we snap the ball VW Webb I believe that's his name I could be wrong I probably butchered it but B, but B Webb VW Webb whatever his name is he, he pretty much shoots towards the outside, and then he makes the play. Now, this is just one of the examples where your opponent is likes to snap and throw the ball. 
and he just throws it into the wrong spot and makes a, and makes a mistake. This is one of the things that we capitalize, and we basically give our offense another chance at the ball, another opportunity to score. Again, another thing we want to do is we want to force our opponent to hold the ball, take away any reads over the middle, and basically uh, force our opponent to um, either try to run or basically give our, our block such time to, to happen. As you can see, we're usuring over, even though it is tough, because I am using two controllers here, but you can see I pretty much, I'm, I'm taking away two routes at the same time while staying disciplined. I, before the ball is snapped, Sean Lee is supposed to guard over the middle of the field. Not just the middle. He's supposed to guard between, pretty much between Fasano and uh, where the hash mark is. He's guarding that area. But anything over the middle in general, he, he's supposed to take away. Now, as you can see, the, the tight end streak is going to be open, but only for a moment. Now, right there, he looks open. And if you were to pass me to any certain way, Barry Church will, will, I have confidence that Barry Church will make the play and either tip the ball or intercept it. So he's not open as he looks, as he may look. But uh, as you can see, everything is pretty much covered. Everything is pretty much covered. The block should start happening. Tyrone, Car Tyrone Crawford is already in. Here comes Anthony Spencer and Jason Hatcher. We got three guys coming after the quarterback with everything locked up again a matter of fact we we actually have four because the market square is pretty much on his way there you know so uh that's pretty much the uh 46 defense and the adjustments that i like to use now um if you want what i can do is um first of all you guys can give a like comment subscribe anything of that nature you guys hit um just drop it in the comment section but uh if you have any questions in terms of um who she you should put uh in um as on your passing downs who you should who you should put on your um d line for your four down pressures or who you should put in coverage um you guys can put the team in the comment section and I will I will break it down the depth chart and what I would use uh, the four down linemen that I would use uh, for this defense. But again, this is the 46 defense, a breakdown of it. Uh, and um, uh, I'm going to I'm going to, uh, here's a little update for the Stinger offense. We only have about um, I would say three or four formations for formations that you need for the offense left again i'm going to be posting bonus plays and plays that you can use i've, I've actually been working on a uh a five well uh empty giant mini scheme uh but the only problem is i have one play and um it's pretty tough to stop if used correctly so uh i'm going to be posting up i'm going to be posting that later during the week but um yeah uh thanks for checking out the video it's dante one three four peace